They know who all of the dirty moors is because they all do the same shit. They they got a pattern, and they can't break from it because it's part of their makeup of who they are. And when they send the report, uh, you know, the body tell the leadership who the rogue elements is because the leader can't always see them. Right. So the people come and be like, I got a complaint. This motherfucker charged me thirty five hundred dollars for a nationality and my cards on the back say U.S. citizen. Mm, mm, mm. The more That's national sense. U.S. citizen. Make that shit make sense. That part. But the way Noble Drew Ali had the original uh, Moorish Holy Temple of Science set up, they couldn't arrest a Moor. Um, and if they did detain one, um, he could send an authorized representative from any one of the temples to go get him and escort him to the temple. Because they didn't have jurisdiction. Now they're in jurisdiction. Big Somebody sense. betrayed Noble Drew Ali and signed a contract with the corporate government that gave them jurisdiction over the members of the Moore Science Temple. And that's what the whole C. Kirkman Bay Mealy Eel conflict was predicated upon in secret. In public, it was a battle for supremacy of who was going to be the leader. And Noble Drew Ali didn't leave neither one of them niggas as the leader. Mm -hmm. the guy that he left with the keys to the kingdom became a member of um, the nation of Islam and a follower of Elijah Muhammad and he passed only a few years ago and his name was Brother Moon all of the elders in the nation know who he is because he the ones who came with the keys that he got from Noble Drew Ali to give to Elijah Muhammad Noble Drew Ali was gave up to the police by his Mufti staff they couldn't get to Noble Drew Ali without having Muftis involved. It's not possible. So the Mufti staff had to be the one, so they was infiltrated. The Nation of Islam got infiltrated and Malcolm X ran a red herring and then did a whole press conference to tell Elijah Muhammad the names of the infiltrators and everybody seen what they wanted to see. They didn't see what was really taking place because they don't know how... Uh, how your mama and my mama ain't never met each other, but they can talk over both our head and they know what they talking about. And we be wondering like, what the fuck they talking about? I think they talking about us. We got a clue, but we don't know. They know exactly what they doing. Right. It's the same way. Um, Malcolm had to find, make the dirty players show their hand. It's just like a card game. When the dirty players show his hand, you know who cheat. These same motherfuckers murdered Malcolm. They murdered Clarence 13X and they murdered Kareem Abdul Jabbar's family in Washington under the title of Black Muslim Mafia. And all the time, they Moorish Zionist Jews, the wise elders of Zion, them niggas. They look like us, but they ain't us. <laughs> All of the police departments is going to be absorbed by the sheriffs. The sheriffs are going to be under the jurisdiction of the Grand Sharif of the land. Chief Malik Angel Bay is his name, a.k.a. Jeff Ford. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. He, the law, he He's the one who enforces the law on the land. That's why he was. That's why he was in prison. They didn't want him out rallying the motherfucking troops but that's his job and his assistant uh off the blue house is big tookie that's why they froze him instead of killing they couldn't kill him they weren't allowed to kill him so i got a question since you said that um uh is he in the spirit realm per se uh because he in colorado and raven rock working out with, with Angel Bay and um, going through paperwork, they right now they're trying to rationalize the 72 secret treaties. It's 72. That's what they went in Mar-a-Lago looking for. The 72 secret treaties is what they was using to operate under. So we're going to find out what they is. 
Because Katita Dean said that she had, um, she was able to pick up on him in the spirit room. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they think they, a medium is picking up a telepathic um, link. They'll think that it's a spirit link because that's all they used to talking to. Mm. Okay. Is, it's just like Tupac. Tupac can talk to me telepathically. It sounds like I got that nigga on the telephone. That makes sense because she was wondering why she was able to talk to Juicy J too. And she's like, they still alive. Like, they're not dead. So that's I what Triple wondering. X kept telling me. Uh, Triple X, the little boy from Florida, or he's from Extension Florida. Extension or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He came through. I was talking about Empire. This motherfucker, he, he came through so strong. And I knew he he got a, he got this thing that he do, and he kept doing it, and it annoyed me. <laughs> he kept calling me bro. Right? <laughs> and I kept telling him, stop calling me bro. And he was like, but bro, you got him, bro. But then when because it was getting on my nerves so bad, I had to ask the people listen. I said, Do anybody know what the fuck this kid talking about? And a couple of his diehard fans were like, That's how he talked. Hmm. He say that all the time. That's how you and he kept saying, Bro, I ain't dead. They tried to kill me, but I ain't dead. Hmm. And he I was talking about Empire Records and Young Dolph at the time. That's crazy because she, the one I was listening to, Young Dolph was there. Like she, yeah. So Young Dolph comes through a lot. Um, he comes through. Um, you Dolph, gotta check her out. Young Dolph ain't dead, but they had a hit on him. They had a hit on him. And if you Google Young Dolph, blood in my eye, and you will see he holding a triangle over his eye and his eye is red. Mm -hmm. That means that he got the devil dead in his sights. He know exactly who doing the dirt. But they know also they know how to read the signs. So they know what he's saying. So they coming. It ain't a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Mm -hmm. So we got two options. Let him kill him or make him think they did. So what you think we going to do? Let them think they can. Fuck them niggas. I want to get my hands on some of them <laughs> niggas personally. Nipsey ain't dead. Nipsey and Eritrea. Aaliyah and Left Eye on Sabi Ranch. Biggie is in Jamaica. Tupac is on a, well, he, he's back and forth between Los Angeles and a, a native reservation in Arizona. Who else you want to know where they at? I, I said, where, who else you wouldn't know where they at? I don't know where ODB at, but they had to get him out the picture and DMX. Most likely they with Tupac, like Easy E. Easy E down there with Tupac too. So what about the one guy? I, I can't remember the, his rap name, but there's a guy that they've been saying is Tupac. And um uh that's just look, that's a kill from hieroglyphics. Okay. That nigga don't look nothing like Tupac. If you bleed that shit, you's a goddamn fool. I didn't think so either, but somebody said that, and they're like, he rap like him. Like, no, he don't. He don't even so. rap like Tupac. Mm-mm, he don't. I had ran across it. I can't remember. It was something on YouTube, and I ran across it, and they were trying to say that it was him or something. Mm -hmm. One of Tupac boys that uh, flipped signs for him is Casanova the Dime. So if you want to hear somebody, he sounds just like Pac. And some of them songs where he's supposed to be sounding like Pop is actually two Pop telling mm -hmm. the story. Right? But you can tell the difference then from Casanova sounding like two Pop and the two Pop songs that he did under the name of Casanova. That nigga was a smart motherfucker. I wish I was that smart. <laughs> you are very smart. <laughs> I don't think I'm fucking with Machiavelli, though. <laughs> Machiavelli, Malachi York, them were some smart motherfuckers. The guy doing Dave Chappelle won the Las Vegas Dave Chappelle lookalike contest. And uh, when Dave Chappelle wouldn't come back from Africa, they set dude up. The same place where he be uh, talking um, in that his Dave Chappelle mama be sitting in the balcony, that's where he won that, that lookalike contest at. So since we talking about this Kanye West, 
Um, because him and Dave, he he talked on Dave a couple times or whatever. They took pictures together and stuff like that. Um, is that a, a clone or is it really Kanye? Or what's going on with that? That's Kanye. Look, Kanye, Kanye got a lot of ways like his mama. And that's what make him um, act like he act. But Kanye, uh, he, he he a solid dude. Motherfuckers don't understand what he doing, but he know exactly what he doing. You remember when he had that fucked up haircut and patches? Mm -hmm. That's because Tukey hair fell out from being froze. Mm. He was just walking around in L.A. like he was 30 below zero. Mm -hmm. That's because Tukey kept having chills. Once they thought him out, he was having real bad chills like he was still froze. And it took him a while. He still get cold flashes that, you know, shake him to the bone. But he almost passed that shit. Now he had, he had he had, they had to sit him in the healing chamber to help him get past that. And when he first came out, when they first thought him out, he had he he was like the real real super lean, but no fat on him because he burnt all the fat throwing out, and he was sore as hell, like he had the worst workout from hell. His body was sore from lactic acid buildup from them throwing him out. So it took him a minute to get past all of that shit from being froze. I love my people, but they ain't freezing me. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> God just going to have to come back and try it again on the next go round. You're not freezing me. Period. <laughs> so I Yo. had questions about uh, Erica Badu, but I have heard that she is heavily protected and things like that um, by our ancestors and stuff. So, um, you and she's a bad know. motherfucker in her own right. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, um, she, she flipped me saying sometimes. At certain times, I'm going to tell you somebody else everybody sleep on and they keep saying she's part of some bullshit and she ain't. And that's the Queen Bee. Oh, Beyonce? I, yeah. I, I question that. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm Virgo, Virgo. I'm just, I question that a lot. At one point, it's like I kind of go like this with it because I just know the industry. And then again, it's like I can pick up some energy that is um, of us. But then there, so I don't know if they use certain, um, like if she has doubles or things like that going on, or mm -hmm. what. This, so this how you, this how you know if they are from the system or if they want us. It, she got video of her practicing at eight years old, all the way up. She got video catalog of her practicing with her group. Right, that means she was putting in the work to earn the position and the rank. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason she ended up with Jay Z is because Jay Z extracted her from under um, Mr. Knowles. Right, he was trying to trade her in a Masonic wedding to somebody she didn't want to be with. Mm -hmm. And when she met Jay Z, they hit it off. And he knew what was going on from street connections. And he told her that you ain't got to, you ain't got to do nothing you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want to stay here with you. He said, it's not a good time, but you can come back. That's when they did that first song together. Okay. Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. Cause he was with Aaliyah. Well, they were uh, dating or whatever for a while. And then, I remember seeing Beyonce. Well, come was back. Dame Dash. Yeah, but she used to date um, Jay Z too. Yeah, but that was like a flash in the pan, right? Okay. That's even if they really dated. Like um, um, Chris Brown, you ever see that pedal gate symbol with the shoe on it? His tattoo on his face. I don't think I've seen it. It's the pizza gate symbol, the triangle. Anyway, got a shoe. It. it got a shoe hanging on it. On it, he. They originally branded him. That's what the original tattoo was. He put the shoe on it, the same reason we throw the shoe on the telephone line in the hood. Remember this nigga, mm -hmm. right? 
So if somebody get life in prison or get uh, murdered, we throw their shoes on the telephone lines. Mm -hmm. Right? That was to remember all of the kids that he had to leave behind when um, um, Little Miss Sunshine helped him escape. So the domestic violence situation with him and Rihanna was staged to get him from under the uh, contracts and they was trying to get him into some gay shit that he didn't want no parts of. He he complained to Jay-Z and Jay-Z sent Rihanna to get him out and told him what to do. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't want a problem. If you notice, ever since that shit been over, he haven't been a problem. But he had to be a problem in order to make them turn their back on him so he can get away. Mm hmm Right. So the domestic violence was bringing too much attention to their sex trafficking ring. So they got rid of him. And that was the whole goal for Rihanna, even messing with Chris Brown. They probably best of friends to this day because she got him out of a situation that they said she couldn't get him out of it. They, yeah, it makes she, sense. they said she wasn't smart enough to figure it out and that she didn't know nobody that could tell her what to do. Well, she got him out. So Nothing. you don't, so everybody, you don't feel like everybody, uh, well, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. Do you feel like everyone in the industry is um, like our enemy, like they're just working for the... No. Um, okay. No. See, what it is, is for <laughs> a long time, we was blocked out of the industry because we know how to talk in the music we know how to talk in a movie. The example is uh, Robin Gibbons and Cicely Tyson was doing the movie. I think it was, uh, I forgot the name of the movie. It might've been Brewster's Place, but uh, Robin Gibbons was telling Cicely Tyson that she just didn't want to be black. Now, this is where Cicely Tyson's ad lib. She jumped up and she said, my father was full-blooded Iroquois and started giving real shit in a movie. It just looked like a good script, so they left it in there. But it told the people of the land that know who they are exactly who she was. She was an Iroquois high priestess, and she was using her roles in Hollywood to talk to her people. That's why she got that big lecture scene in that Tyler Perry's uh, uh movie where everybody went home and she was standing on the porch talking to all of the youth. Mm -hmm. She didn't say nothing that wasn't true. That's the crazy part. It's a movie. But she didn't say nothing in that speech that wasn't true. Right? Tyler Perry's job was to build us a Hollywood without them involved in it. And it took him a long time. If you remember, the first play, I think, was called One Monkey Don't Stop No Show. And he took off after that. When he first went to them to try to produce his plays, they laughed him out of the office. Then he started doing them himself. Like, fuck it, I promote my own plays. I remember that. Yeah. But you know how, like, they, how they say that them wearing the dresses is basically um, demasculating the man in a public uh, setting it is. or whatever. It is, because one of the things that humiliate us is to put us in a dress or shoot us in the ass. Right? But the thing with Tyler Perry was when he started dressing up from, as Bud did, he couldn't find nobody to play the role. And he got such rave reviews, he just continued to do it. Okay. But Madea is the representation of Big Mama. It's also telling you that Big Mama throne been usurped by a man. The same mm -hmm. thing with Martin Lawrence and Big Mama. Right? And I remember, sense. after he dropped the Big Mamas, he was fucked up. They got him yeah. running up, up and down motherfucking Sunset Boulevard butt naked with a pistol. Right. I do remember that. They slipped him a Mickey. Right? Fucked him up. He ain't all the way back yet. 
I remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you believe um, Princess Diana is um, actually able to, um, and I'm only asking this again because of a medium, um, able to um, reach out to our people in a spiritual realm to kind of give them some type of um, guidance on what's actually going Princess on? Princess Diana is called a white, a white witch. Okay. She a bad motherfucker. She didn't, she wasn't in that car. She said that too. MI5 um, was tasked with killing her. MI6 was tasked with protecting her. MI6 sent the decoy and took Diana out the back of the hotel because they knew the hit was on. Was on. So the, uh, the, the lookalike don't even look like Diana. She just had a blind wig on. And they had her looking down when she was walking to the car so they couldn't see her face. That's how they extracted her. Mm 